Hi. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we, we only have one filmmaker for this session, and um, please welcome Francina uh, Flavia. Yeah. So, um, first of all, uh, is there any question from the audience about uh, her film? Yes. Anyone? Yes. I have one question to your Rosalie of Deutsch of English Fragen. Was is the lieber? Um, it doesn't matter to me, but if ah, okay. there's someone. No, no, in English then. So, my, the, the, the approach, like um, your research and the text you wrote and um, you read then in the performance, um, was that your first uh, attempt and your approach? And why did you do that? Why did you. And was it different people who wrote the text, or was it just you both? Um, so, this all started out completely just in free flow. Um, I wrote my story and it was just supposed to be for me. <laughs> and uh, then I read it to a friend uh, of mine, Wiebke, and it resonated so much because we already started talking about our shame and stuff. So we used it as an input for a workshop and then like it inspired people so much to talk about these topics and we realize that this is a scientific method uh, that we can use and so this is supposed to be an example basically and we use it as example to show people this approach for another film we're making so this was just something we sent to a few people uh, so they know how to write their stories of shame It's kind of like a work in progress, even like the film? Uh, this film itself was never meant to be published or anything, but then it found its way. It's good uh, to be seen also as a research tool, right? But uh, the movie we intended to work on is, is another one that is about queer feminist futures and where this is used as a tool on different people. But this was just written by us and uh, yeah, just completely made by us. No budget, nothing. <laughs> uh, I have one question because at one point um, you talked about uh, being in a theater group and everything. And I just imagined um, the whole text could also have been on a stage. And how did you come to uh, documentary films and <laughs> I mean, um, at the end it turned out like this uh, as a documentary basically, right? Like it, it looks like this, but it's like a diary entry. And uh, But we realized, right, this recurring performance of this. So th like you have to repeat it over and over again in front of different people. So it loses the power over you, like the whole story of shame. So. Uh, yeah, that's just what we did. We just cut it together then for some other people to see. And basically, that's we found out with that, like, that this is supposed to be a whole method for us. We didn't know where we were going. And, uh, yeah, but we're continuing with that. My Thank you. Well, uh, I'd like to comment on all four films, but I don't expect you to answer for the three others, though. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate the organizers for curating this session. I think it was marvelous the way that they put these four films together. Uh, because, I mean, I know what, how difficult that is, but also it's interesting when you get films that in many ways are very different put together and then you see lots of links between them. And I was trying to think what it is to, in my mind that brought them together, including your film. And it has something to do... The dance. <laughs> it has something to do with uh, uh, something we don't probably talk about enough, which is dramaturgy. Uh, 
And I think that all films, to me, struck me. I wasn't thinking at one moment, this is documentary or this is ethnographic film. I was thinking, my goodness, this is like theater. This is like play. This is performance. I, this is Chekhov. This is Pinto. This is Strindberg. This is Ibsen on film. Thank you for that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think that is an important thing to notice, that uh, this is performative research so to bring together science and art is something we really strive for and this is a way to do it do your own performance <laughs> so if i may oh geez wow um for, uh, i want to uh, thank you zina for also like opening up and showing your film uh, we have talked a little bit before the screening. Um, I have a direct question to your film and then later on uh, a note to another one. Um, as for your art work, um, what fascinates me is the progress uh, of how you perceive your feeling of shame. Now, it, uh, from my point of view, there's different steps to it. Firstly, you have to recognize for what you feel ashamed yourself. You have to write it down. Then you have to open up to Wiebke in that sense. Then you have to film it. And now having this screened here in a fairly large auditory, um, I would like to ask you how uh, and if your view on shame, maybe in a personal way, has changed. Um, so that will be my question and to my note. Uh, to another film, I have been asked by Beate Engelbrecht to uh, share some thoughts on the last one that we've seen, Ishim. Uh, fairly, I have not really much knowledge about the city, about the context. Uh, the only thing that Beate uh, uh, well, brought to my mind is my own backstory of being Russian and being raised uh, as an immigrant and so on and so forth. I found it quite interesting uh, to see in the last film. It wasn't really mentioned, but uh, the uh, pain uh, of uh, well, the thing uh, like work, how to find work, how to organize it, and I found it quite moving to see it in the last film how it was shown in a way that uh, the the fall of the Soviet Soviet Union in the 90s has brought many peoples, including the people on the screen, for example, or my parents in that sense, uh, that they have had to go through. Uh, in a collapsed state, non-existent state anymore. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I don't want to return directly to the question you asked about my movie because I think that needs space too. Um, I, I just wanted to add to that that I think it's amazing to see how the mother, also very helpful to see and painful to see how the mother tries to play everything over because they are used to being strong and they have to be strong and they are really resilient and maybe don't want to bother the son with the pain so she's laughing all the time about what she actually feels pain about and um, yeah and I, she also has a lot of shame I noticed uh, connected with that anyway um, before about shame, like how, what is the progress, right? And now sitting here seeing that one was never meant to be published even. And the thing is we weren't like stepping directly from writing it down and then making a movie. We were just reading it in front of other people and we performed it in every time. We were so nervous and every time it's, it's a whole experience and every time something else is shaking loose uh, because people are always relating to, to these topics in different ways and where you see, okay, I, I have been regulated by this shame in this way and that's an experience that I'm sharing with others and I think it's important to share that and I think it's more a symbolic act for me to be here and to show this because this shows me that this does not have power over me because it had a lot of power that's why I wrote it down right it was it's still sometimes traumatic stuff but I'm so proud that I don't really care <laughs> anymore. Yeah. No, please don't. Okay. <laughs> no, 
I just wanted to comment on Peter and also thank the curatorial team. I think it's, yes, it is formalistic, like it's theater, but the content as well, you know, like of course it's family, alternative family, but you know, like of course it's family, alternative family, but it's also all the four films deal with kind of like um, self-hate and how you deal with self-hate in a way, like even like in the first films, becoming a drag is just like a, a form of empowering something, self-hate, and and in the fourth film, of course, we we all try to kind of like fulfill this fantasma of being the perfect mother, the perfect boy, the perfect heterosexual woman, and all those films deal with different ways of um, coping with that, and that's why I thought it's not only the form that kind of like fits all the films together, but also the content and the different um, ways of dealing with it, and I think that, yeah, that was a good curatorial decision, I think. Yeah, and I... Okay. <laughs> Sit down. Um, I, I thought so too, because that is something that we will always recognize if we have a perspective on it. Like, uh, if we looking at anthropology and ethnology in a queer way um, at ourselves in a queer way we will recognize a lot of things and one of those things is that the categories that we are faced with that we are raised with are never enough so for example with boy queen i was compl left completely confused because it, there is a lot of indicators that this person is actually trans but doesn't have the categories for it but maybe not and it's just because this if this person is seen as gay that means he can't be a boy uh, which is like to understand being drag is not being trans but still there's a lot of confusion as soon as you try we try to use these categories in other cultural contexts or like it generally on us we see like nothing fits also i'm not like entirely a woman so you said she and but it's more they but in german it doesn't make a difference for example because nobody will uh, say zero or whatever and it's a weird category so what are we left with is what we are given and that's that's how we get easily regulated right and the only way to resist is to reflect on that and to face our shame <laughs> yes thank you uh, i have a small question following that one uh, about uh, the question of uh, having the movie uh, your movie as a theater performance uh, you you said uh, you've uh, wanted to see where it goes. You've said that. I just uh, would like to uh, hear from you more about why exactly you choose uh, the medium of film. Um, so for this specific movie, it was uh, some kind of practical thing because we wanted to show other people the tool that we're using for the film we are currently working on as the first part of it so other people can do this too and that's just some kind of example so that was pretty clear but in general uh, it's just obvious to me that most media won't reach most people and if we have something that we can break down uh, like that, like without too many scientific categories that is based on experience. Everyone can understand that, everyone can relate to that, especially a movie. It's even more easy for people to perceive that. And I think that's very important because science shouldn't be for scientists. Yeah, and I think that's just the media that will go best nowadays. <laughs> Uh, my question is uh, very general in, in on the nature of shame itself. Shame is uh, pretty much used to define uh, where it is safe to function in a socially acceptable way. Uh, for example, where I come from and where I am now, the prefer is different. Like here it's much more wider while the community back home is much more closer. What you can do in, in front of other people is 
and like how you behave in front of other people is different. Shame is somehow used as a methodology to function with other people. So as this periphery is somehow receding, when it becomes wider, what is really taking place? Uh, are we, the peripheries shifting, or are we adopting a new, like somehow shame economy? I love this question because I already heard it today. Yeah. Um, and I think it's always important to ask, who does the shame serve? And most of the time it serves heteropatriarchy, right? And uh, most of the times it's, it's, hard, it's very westernized, very yeah, heterosexual matrix that is just reproduced with shame a lot. So of course, like, it, it, you always have to ask the question. I think that's just my moral guidance. Like, is it violating someone? Is there violence involved? And if it's about my body, my bodily autonomy, how I express myself, there is no harm done to other people. And if they think there is harm done to them because they think, what the fuck is they do are they doing? Like, what is this, right? If they feel offended, um, that is something that would appear on my surface as shame. But if I don't let that happen, I have another a link with boy queen here uh, and with mothers um, if you come into a room and you share with people shamelessly your stories of shame people won't go like what did you do there but like even though of course that's what you expect kind of but it's not happening and the thing is um, one drag queen said that you, you can shyly come and be like, yeah, maybe I'm actually a drag queen and like have a coming out. You got to be there and say, I'm a drag queen. I'm a, ha a hairdresser. I'm an artist. Because, you know, you got to decide that whatever you are, you, you are going to be. And if you can't hide away that stuff and something like identity can't be hidden away without harming you, uh, it's supposed to be expressed right and that's the only way to be happy to say it uh, with mother's words <laughs> yeah i think that was a really strong link and i completely felt that and i think that the only way to break taboos is with confidence Thank you very much. Um, it's just very nice to have a filmmaker so eloquent and <laughs> that made my job easier. <laughs> and I'm sure in the audience you still have uh, some question. Maybe afterward you still have some question to the filmmaker and also for uh, the boy queen and mothers. Uh, although the filmmaker is not here, but their contest is uh, in their their contests are in the catalog. So just feel free to email them. And now. Um, yeah, thank you very much for partic participating, and now we are having a, a dinner break. And thank you again, Francina, thanks yes, for sharing your opinions and um, such a nice discussion with the audience. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And so um, the next film, the next film will be uh, at 19. Uh, 7.30 uh, in the evening is a really beautiful film. It's called the mushroom, the mushroom at the Top of the World. So see you later and enjoy your dinner. Can we do that later? No, we no? have to do it on stage first.